Yes, done. Yeah. Okay. You can go. Uh, hello, world. Um, I am Shelley, and as Rohan said, I'm a famous, you know, plural site author. Not quite, but we will talk about that um, at the end of this session. But today we will talk about the FAQs that I'm asked most often about Helix. I do um, help students through many mediums, through LinkedIn, through Twitter, and plural site as well and and slack probably um so yeah i'm asked questions a lot and i wanted to answer those questions here so maybe i won't get the same questions all the time <laughs> all right um so the first question i am asked most often is what is the best way to migrate an existing sitecore project to helix um, before we get in on the how to, I like to talk about planning, um, because this will help you set up your team for success by answering these, um, three key questions for your Helix migration. Uh, the first one I like to ask is, are any features being deprecated or removed. Um, I find that this is your opportunity to find features that are not currently uh, used by your client or customer, because there's no sense migrating features to Helix that aren't even used. And plus, this will help you streamline your code. It'll help you uphold the um, solid principles of high cohesion and low coupling as well. Uh, next, I like to ask what features can be grouped together? And do any of these features share the same functionality as well? Um, and this will help you to really determine what your new projects will look like in your Helix solution as you figure out um, your Helix modules, which will be um, largely in the feature layer. Um, and this will help you to plan out um, what uh, pieces of code are linked together and therefore would exist in the same Helix module. And then I like to ask uh, what code dependencies exist now, um, because this is kind of the main point of Helix to um, manage your dependencies on your projects. And remember that uh, the project layer can inherit from any other layer. The feature layer can only inherit from the foundation layer. And furthermore, the feature layer, any modules in that layer really should not um, reference any other module in that same layer. And of course, the foundation layer uh, can inherit from other modules in that layer, but no other layer, because that one's on the bottom. Um, so this uh, question will really help you to work out what um, what parts of your existing code will go into each layer as you move forward in your project. And I like to include all of this information in the technical specs for the um, Helix migration project. Um, and I would also list out all of the feature modules and what is included in them as well. These plans may change um, as, as you progress in the migration, but I think at least having a plan up front will really help you set up for success. And it's interesting how I'm, I'm asked... Uh, 
this question a lot of how to migrate. And I think a lot of people are looking for the technical instructions, but a lot of it is actually just planning ahead of time. Uh, so, sorry, go back. Um, so next is the how to. The technical aspects of creating your um, Helix project. First, you would want to create an entirely new and clean solution in Visual Studio and migrate the code from your existing solution to this. Um, this is especially true if you're using automation tools that I talked about at Symposium, including the Helix Generator or the Helix extension in Visual Studio. You wouldn't want to um, plug in these tools to an existing um, solution. Well, you could, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of everything clean, <laughs> everything precise. Um, so this will allow you to do a complete overhaul on your deploy process because you will need it. Um, you will need to deploy every single project in your solution. And I've, I've had Helix solutions I've, I've worked on that had like a hundred projects in them. So you would definitely want a tool to just publish all of those projects. You don't have to do it manually one by one. Uh, and then what I like to do first when migrating a large project is to create a legacy folder. Um, the project manager should really work with you to determine what um, features you are migrating to Helix um, up front, which ones are most used on the site. And then everything else can be um, scheduled to migrate later on after launch. <clears throat> uh, the legacy folder can really, it can also store any code in your current project that is not likely to be changed, um, at least, you know, anytime soon. And then, so you'll need to migrate everything that should go in the foundation and project layers because those two are kind of the keys for your overall um, code stability and presentation. Um, it is very important to migrate any uh, third party connections you have to other APIs. We'll talk about that in depth later on because that's another question I'm asked a lot. Uh, you could potentially leave things like Sitecore helpers in the legacy folder, but only if they're used by um, features that also exist in the legacy folder. Um, you would also put things uh, like ORM models and serialization in the foundation layer uh, and the project layer is where you would store all of your layouts and for sure layouts should be um, migrated to Helix up front. Uh, and then you would create your feature modules by priority. Uh, they will be grouped together by similar functionality, any, any code that is shared between uh, each feature. Anything that has renderings will go into the feature layer. And I, f I feel like the key for grouping modules together 
is that modules in the feature layer should not reference other projects in that same layer. So this will really help you to plan out um, which uh, features should exist in uh, one Helix module together. And in terms of the actual code process, I like to have one dev work on a single Helix module at a time. I find that if you have multiple people checking in code to one um, module, it can cause merge conflicts, um, con the conflicts. <laughs> And um, this will also help you to improve your overall efficiency. All right, so then after you've migrated the code or while it's happening, you also have to migrate your items in Sitecore. Um, I like to do this when I start to have the Visual Studio solution in place. Um, so you'll need to mirror the architecture of your solution in Sitecore. I would say if you're doing a upgrade along with a Helix migration, which is quite popular, uh, you should definitely start with a fresh install of Sitecore. And in the latest versions, I think starting in version nine, they actually added all of the feature foundation and project folders that you'll need to organize your architecture in Sitecore. Excuse me a second. I got, I got allergies. <laughs> um, all right. So, oh, no, go back. Your templates uh, should be organized the same as your renderings and layouts in the project. Um, so then in the project layer, you would create your page type templates, which I don't actually have shown here, but your page type templates it, uh, are where you would <clears throat> apply the layout from the project layer in your solution. And then your content templates should be stored in the feature folder using the same structure as the corresponding feature. For example, if the content template applies to a rendering in the feature.navigation Helix module, the template would be located in templates feature navigation. And this will really make it a lot easier for devs to know where everything um, lives in Sitecore because you're using just a standardized architecture. So then you've got your layouts and renderings. These will follow the same rule and will be organized into folders to mirror the structure in your Visual Studio Helix solution. Layouts will always go into the project layer and renderings will always go into the feature layer. So this really makes it a lot easier for devs to not have to look up where everything is in Sitecore. Um, having this nice standardized um, architecture really is a lot more efficient overall. All right, um, so as I said, the next question I am asked most often is where do you store third-party API connections and related renderings? Cool. So your connection to a third-party API, the actual connection itself should go into the foundation layer. As you can see here, I've got a YouTube um, feature that also has a call to the 
YouTube API. This is something that I have built for many different projects. Um, so the actual connection itself would go into the feature layer, I mean, foundation layer. And this project would also include any helper methods. Oh, sorry. I forgot to hit next. Uh, this uh, Helix module in the foundation layer would also include any helper methods uh, that would send the data to the rendering. Renderings, of course, would go into the feature layer. And the Helix module in the feature layer will inherit from the related module in the foundation layer so that your renderings will have access to the data needed to render the content. Um, I would say that any business logic that's done to massage the data for display can be done either in the foundation or feature layers. That's really up to you. I would say that if you are completely restructuring it, uh, that I, I would put in the foundation layer. But if you're just making um, formatting changes to the text and stuff like that, uh, I think that that could actually live in in the same uh, Helix module in the feature layer. Unless, of course, you have to um, do the same type of um, text formatting elsewhere, then, of course, you would want to create a um, helper method in the foundation layer. Um, for example, uh, let's say you have this YouTube feature to import videos from a YouTube channel to a content item in Sitecore. This is something I've, I've built a couple times. Um, the actual connection to the YouTube API will go into the foundation layer along with configs to store um, things like the channel ID or any secrets or tokens you need to actually connect to the API and have permissions to retrieve um, information from it. Um, so, and as you see here in the screenshot, the config itself is also organized in a Helix way. So in the file system, it would be really easy to find again, because we have this nice standardized architecture. So it would go into your app config include folder. And then within that folder, you would have more folders for each um, part of your site as well. And it should follow the naming convention um, as well. So it should, the name of the folder should exactly match the name of the Helix module to make it easier to find. And then you would have a uh, rendering in the feature layer and possibly also a Sitecore task or um, PowerShell script that would run to import the information from uh, the API. And I generally put these um, into the same Helix module in the feature layer because you are creating um, items in Sitecore. All right. Uh, last but not least, I am often asked, how do you organize multi-tenant sites in a Helix project? There are a few ways 
to do this, but I have kind of a general practice that I like to do. I would say that for every tenant within your implementation, you would have separate Helix modules in the project layer. Uh, and then <clears throat> these project modules would contain the assets and presentation, including layouts and CSS, HTML, JavaScript for each specific site. Because generally when you're working with multi-tenant sites um, or multi-tenant site core implementations, um, each, each site generally has its own style. If it does not have its own style, um, that would be interesting. You could just keep everything in one project and then just, um, sorry, one Helix module in the project layer and just be sure to name that project something generic. Um, and then, but for sure, if you have uh, multiple sites that all have separate um, styling, then it would it would definitely be worth it to create separate projects in Helix in the project layer for each site. It would be good if um, whoever is writing the front end code um, that they should be aware that the structure for each site, it would be really nice to um, reuse most of the HTML, but then um, you would have separate CSS classes that would just be easily interchangeable between each tenant so that you can reuse the same renderings in the feature layer, which we'll get to in a second. There are, um, there are a lot of times where this is impossible, where each site really has um, its, its own style overall, and the HTML is widely, you know, different. So in these cases, I like to create shared layouts, and these shared layouts would reuse the same overall, sorry, shared rendering. The it's, it's early here, by the way, it's like, uh, almost 9am. So my brain's not completely unlocked yet. Um, but yeah, if, if you really can't structure the, um, HTML with the CSS styling exactly the same with each site, then you would definitely want to create um, shared renderings that will make it possible to plug in the uh, same features so that you don't have to create multiple uh, renderings for the same feature. A lot of the reason for this is just that you want to have a um, clean code base and um, as I talked about a little bit earlier, uphold all of the solid principles of object-oriented programming, especially low coupling and high cohesion. I think are the two that really um, stand out as improved in Helix architecture. So then uh, you should be able to share the renderings, as I said, in the feature layer between tenants. This is really only possible um, if the styling is interchangeable, um, even, even if you used shared renderings to try to massage the 
um, uh, HTML to be um, interchangeable between each site. There would definitely be some cases where if your structure is not interchangeable, that you would really need to create um, either one one rendering with if statements, right? So like if the structure or if the uh, site URL is one thing, then um, show this specific HTML, but if it's another thing, then um, show the other HTML. But yeah, I would, I would definitely say that the key to this is to work with um, whoever's writing the front end code to really try to make it as reusable as possible. I'm lucky because I've worked with a lot of amazing uh, developers who always make it an easy job because all of the HTML and styling is completely um, interchangeable, which I I am very thankful for. I've I've had a lot of much easier projects because of that. Um, I would also say that uh, other than working with front end, uh, you should work with the client or customer to determine if there are any site specific features. Um, I've, I've had clients say that a feature will only be used on one site and then later on they change their mind. So that is why I say that for features, it's really important to um, ask your client specific questions to figure out if these um, features may be used on other sites later on. Um, and then I would also say that it's very important to keep the names of your projects and the names of your renderings uh, generic because you never know what your client will do, right? <laughs> you may create a rendering um, to show, I don't know, like a um, call out on the home page. Will that call out be used on other pages? So then if it's home page specific, it would live in a project um, probably called feature uh, home page. But then if the client through conversations, you realize that that call out might be used on other pages with similar HTML structure, then you wouldn't want to put that rendering into a home page module. Um, you could put it elsewhere because the project layer is what handles presentation. So each page on your site could have renderings from multiple feature modules and this is normal. This is completely normal. Um, yeah, so this is all, again, ensuring that your code in the feature layer is as reusable as it can be. All right, so I wanted to share with you some uh, updates that are coming to my PSYCHOR courses on Pluralsight that teach Helix. So I currently have two courses, as Rohan said earlier, um, these are available now. Uh, these courses do currently cover PSYCHOR 9.3 but I have just completed updates to PSYCHOR 10, and they'll be out probably in about two weeks, I'd say. Uh, these updates will completely 
um, replace everything that's there now. I had to completely, oops, sorry. I had to completely redo getting started with Psychor Helix because I stupidly, <laughs> the first version, the names of the sites and the project and everything all had the um, version of Psychor in them. So I've, I've changed all of that, which you'll see. Uh, and this course will also include some very uh, useful topics. So I'm covering installing and working with Sitecore 10. And then I'm also covering Docker. I've added three new clips to getting started uh, that cover installing Docker for Windows, installing Sitecore, um, using the Sitecore examples um, containers that are available now as well. And then I even went so far as to learn and do a clip on deploying your Sitecore Helix project to an existing container. That was a very high learning curve for me, so I hope that I can simplify it and make it much easier for you <laughs> to do this stuff as well. Uh, and then um, I'm also covering in um, building a Psychor Helix website. I am covering the updated Sitecore Helix Templates Visual Studio extension that has support for Sitecore 10. I want to give a big thank you to Anders Lobb for um, getting these updates done so incredibly quickly. And he actually has already published this extension um, to the Visual Studio marketplace as well. So that is available now. Um, when I update the courses in a few weeks, I'll also include a copy of the extension itself, just in case um, it changes at some point, right? So um, everyone can work on the same version as I am in the course. And I just wanted to share with you that in 2021, I hope to create more uh, Docker courses. Uh, the current topics I'm looking at are managing Sitecore Docker containers, and then also troubleshooting Sitecore Docker containers, because Again, that it's a very steep learning curve, and I wanted to tear my hair out sometimes when my my containers threw weird errors, and I had no idea what they meant. So, I would like to put together a course um, including everything I went through, everything that I've talked about with people, um, just to make sure that everybody understands uh, where to go when you're having trouble <laughs> with your containers. And, oh, I forgot. I also have a new course coming out. <laughs> so my next course uh, will be administering a Sitecore website. <clears throat> This will include think topics like users, roles, domains, and security. Uh, and I will also be covering workflows, and I'll be showing how to create a custom workflow action as well. This should be out. Oops. Sorry. This should be out um, early January. I would say, and you can um, 
go to hofstech.com slash sim to sign up for my newsletter and you will be notified when I publish a new course. You can also follow me on Pluralsight as well, and that will actually send you an email the instant the instant the course goes up. So there's that as well. So that's about it for my presentation. I wanted to open it up for a Q&A uh, to just answer any questions about um, anything I've covered here today. Does anybody have any questions? Hey, hi, Shelly. Thank you so much for uh, getting us through the complete presentation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, uh, understand or just wanted to have that link where you uh, provide certain courses and all, right? So is that there on the plural side or do we have any other link where I can approach and uh, go for this course? Yeah, so if you go to... Um, Pluralsight.com. Okay. Uh, you can just look for um, Sitecore, actually, and here are my courses. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So yeah. the new courses that you're going to add in uh, are going to be added out here itself, right? Related to the doctor and all. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, and I I also believe that after I have published the next course, Pluralsight is planning to create a skill path for uh, Sitecore as well. So um, if you went to, uh, no, you know what's a really good one is to search for Docker because they have a great skill path for that. So that's uh, here in paths and a skill path just combines um, courses that cover a specific topic. And then also after we have a skill path, everybody can have a skill IQ. So um, you can really show your Sitecore expertise by um, taking a few assessments that will um, score you on uh, knowledge overall. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. There okay. are also, um, there are links to um, these courses on the page I shared, hofstech.com slash Sitecore Sim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here um, is my landing page, and I have links to each um, course here as well. Okay. Yeah. And I would say okay, that if, you. yeah, you're welcome. If, if anybody's interested in Plural site right now, they're having the biggest sale of the year. They've never done 40% off of a um, subscription at, at all. So um, that's, that's a pretty big deal right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, uh, hi, Shelly. This is Pushpagnan. Uh, if there is no one else, I will move on. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, I'm one of the you know several hundreds of uh, developers or education uh, you know who learned who went through your uh, initial two modules on uh, uh, plural site regarding site for Helix. It has helped me uh, you know uh, develop a better understanding. Thank you for that, and I'm looking forward for your additional courses. Uh, now, the second thing is like uh, uh, in our uh, uh, project layer with multi-tenant uh, 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 modules, right? You mentioned that. Uh, Assets can be included in the uh, project layer, but uh, I've seen in certain uh, uh, solutions uh, for assets, especially the CSS, JS, we'll be having a separate theming project under foundation layer. Uh, do these two actually make any difference, or uh, uh, it doesn't matter? It all depends upon how we are. Uh, you know, it, it it it's up to the uh, client and the architectural the, the archi architect's decision. Yeah, you know, 
that's a really good question that I um, did not think about when I made this presentation. I've I've also worked in projects that have a uh, theming helix module in the foundation layer. I would say um, that is a good idea. And then if if you have one project for theming, um, you could, if you have multiple sites, would you want to split that project out into multiple projects for each site? That's a good question. I guess you you could if you wanted, but then you could also make it so that the theming project has folders per site for the the assets for that site specifically. But then when you deploy, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it would deploy the assets for every site, which is fine, um, which is actually what you need. And then in the project layer, your layouts would just point to um, whichever um, style sheets and JavaScript support yeah, actually, that specific uh, site. Uh, uh, technically, and uh, you know, the based on the uh, the uh, dependency concept which we discussed, right? Like uh, a foundation, a project layer uh, uh, module can uh, uh, inherit from or depend on feature foundation, but a feature can never uh, depend on project. So, I mean, I just had this question just really rose. Like, if we uh, uh, if we have the CSS and H, I mean JavaScript component in the project layer, ideally our renderings will be referring to them. So it's uh, against what we uh, discussed, right? So that's why I asked. Yeah, that's a really good point. I guess I I didn't think about that when I was making this. Um, but yeah, I would I would correct myself and say that uh, your your assets and styling you would definitely want to put those in a uh, theming project. But then in the project layer, I think you might still have multiple. Helix modules for each site. Yeah, you, you could also, uh, yeah, you could also potentially have one um, Helix module in the project layer that would have um, multiple folders for each site layout. That's also an option. There are a lot of different ways to approach this and I would say whatever's easiest for um, or not easiest, whatever is most efficient for your specific project and especially your deploy process overall. Um, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Does anybody else have uh, 